lastly, what I'd like to do is, is show you that we can start to build prototype circuits. Um, and I'll take a few minutes to describe what this is. So this is an image of the circuit on a polyester substrate. Uh, and basically, it has an electrochromic pixel that we printed by aerosol jet and a series of um, transistors or, or circuitry to control the turning on of this pixel. Um, what we want is a pixel that blinks two times after an arbitrary input pulse is applied um, here. And so this is the general scheme, the layout. The input pulse would come in here. It goes into a series of delay chains, which combine with NAND gates. So we have four uh, delay chains or inverter chains. And these then are summed up and go into a pixel driver portion of the circuit. And they, um, this is the pixel here. This represents the pixel. So we apply uh, minus one uh, volt to one electrode and zero to the other. And then we can switch that. So this is actually called an H-bridge circuit in uh, EE lingo. And this circuit contained 25 printed uh, transistors, uh, two dozen or so resistors, about a dozen capacitors, and some crossovers. Um, so this is actually what the actual circuit layout looks like. Um, you can see uh, that we've got to print now these resistors and, and transistors and, and capacitors. Um, and on this slide, I show you just, again, transistor characteristics, um, showing that you know this is, this is what we were able to achieve on these plastic substrates, very nice looking transistors, good on to off ratios, turning on your zero volts. We used uh, P-type devices uh, in this application. Um, we were able to print capacitors uh, by essentially sandwiching a polymer semiconductor uh, between an electrolyte layer uh, and a conducting polymer and a, another metal electrode. This is the capacitance versus frequency response for these printed capacitors. Uh, we get very high capacitance. And then here are the output pulses of the printed circuit. So this is the input pulse into this device. And then we generate this actual data, two uh, output pulses, one going from minus 1 volt to 0. And that's on one electrode. And the other one goes from 0 to uh, minus 1. And what we've done is to look at these output pulses as a function of the size of the display that we're driving. And you can see that we're driving a rather large pixel. You know, for a couple of square millimeters, we still get a very nice shaped pulse. When we start to get up to about six millimeters square, it's, it gets to be big enough that we put enough load on the circuit that this pulse shape uh, deforms a bit. But um, this is a nice application of just a very simple display. And we can drive it all with printed electronics. Um, and here on this slide, um, I show you in the upper right, the output pulses to one electrode. Here's the pixel here on the left. The output pulses to one electrode um, for 100 minutes of continuous operation in a dry nitrogen environment. So there's no encapsulation on this device. We just operated it in the glove box. But you can see very little degradation in the output uh, curves. So um, we, can, we can now make good, um, robust devices. 